Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now over the years I've experimented with LoRa up at 868 megahertz, ranging from LoRaWAN to credit card size trackers to MeshTastic, the off-grid messaging system that is currently the in thing. Now having a good antenna is one of the most important parts of the system because we're dealing with such low power around 22 dBm and such high frequencies. So setting up a home base station for LoRa has to be planned and depending on your budget, available real estate for mounting antennas and the equipment used will factor in how well your system performs. Now due to the low power and high frequencies, it's not uncommon for most people to install the electronics of a LoRa node at the base of the antenna. Now this cuts down on signal loss in lengthy coax. But there is a way around this if you don't want to mount the electronics parts at the base of the antenna and have the equipment indoors. And that's to use a high gain antenna and extremely low loss coax, both of which can be expensive, especially the coax cable. But believe me, it will be worth the extra money for the performance you will obtain. Now searching around the internet for a suitable home base LoRa antenna, I was drawn to Paradar. Now they make antennas specifically designed for LoRa amongst other antennas. Now their top of the range omnidirectional LoRa antenna comes in at around 110 British pounds, but it offers a 360 degree radio plot and it has a massive 11.5 dBi of gain. Now to achieve these figures, the antenna is actually 220 centimeters in length. So it's not the smallest of antennas, but big is better, right? For me, I wanted to run the coax into my office room because I'll use the antenna for all sorts of LoRa projects, not just MeshTastic. So having a node mounted at the base of the antenna will be a pain in the rear end because, well, I don't do ladders. Now, Paradar have a few options when it comes to coax. They have their own X400 ultra low loss coax, which comes in a range of pre-terminated lengths as 3, 5, 10 and 15 meters. Now, of course, if you're going down this route with pre-terminated connectors on the end of the coax, I'd recommend only purchasing the length that you actually need. Even with the expensive low loss coax, you will still see some loss of signal. Now, Paradar also have the option to purchase LMR 400, which is slightly more expensive, but the loss at 868 megahertz is a bit less, meaning more of your 100 milliwatt LoRa signal will be getting to the antenna. Now, Paradar also sell all of the adapters and coax patch cables that you'll need to go between your LoRa nodes and antenna connections if you need them. Now, one other item that I needed was some self amalgamating tape, which Paradar also sell. Now, it will become apparent why this is an important part needed in a moment. Now, once the antenna arrived, I noticed that it comes in two parts. I guess shipping a 2.2 meter antenna is not really ideal. But it's not a huge issue as they simply screw together. Now the bracket at the bottom, which is used to attach the antenna to a mast, needs to be fitted like this. Now the connector on the bottom of the antenna is an N-type female, so make sure whatever coax you use will have the N-type male plug on the end of it. Now attaching the halves of the antenna is fairly simple. They just screw together like this. Now just make sure you get it square on, tightening it up to avoid damaging those threads. And once it's tightly screwed together is when we'll need that self amalgamating tape. Now using a good helping of this tape ensures that no water ingress happens over time. Now the last thing we want to happen is to have the antenna installed 30 feet up in the air and for the antenna's performance to deteriorate due to water ingress into that center join. Using the self amalgamating tape will ensure that water stays out. Now, once you've fitted the coax cable to the bottom of the antenna, I would also recommend applying some of that tape here too. It just provides extra protection and ensures your antenna will stay working for years to come without the need to take it down and clean or service it. Now, I really wanted to get the base of the antenna above the roof line. But in order to do that on a separate mast meant using far more coax than I wanted to, plus the extra cost for another mast and mounting bracket. So I decided to use my existing mast with what is called a cranked mast. Now here we could push the antenna up as high as possible 
and then have the new coax for the Paradar antenna coming down the mast into my office using a little bit less coax. Now I don't like heights and you'd never catch me up on some ladders, let alone on the roof of a house. So with a friend of mine from APT Aerials, he done all the hard work and installed the antenna on the mast. Now luckily it wasn't that heavy and carrying it up the mast and attaching to the existing mast was actually relatively easy. Well, for me it was because I was on the ground looking up. Now I was concerned about the antenna being so close to my other tri-band vertical antenna, but since it's been installed, I've not seen any performance issues and the SWR and both antennas were to be expected and were exactly the same. So here it is, the Paradar 11.5 DBI vertical antenna, which stands at 220 centimeters tall and doesn't look too bad in my opinion, and it's as high as I wanted it to be. So back inside with the coax fed through the wall, I wanted to check the SWR using my network analyzer. And here we can see a lovely SWR plot and it's around 1.1 at 868 megahertz. Now I don't think we can get any better than that. You also notice that it's quite broad banded, meaning that it has a little bit of give either side of the 868 megahertz. Now out of interest, I wanted to see what the band activity was like. So I hooked up my RSPDX SDR receiver from SDR Play and looked around 868 megahertz. Now we can clearly see there's quite a lot going on here. And not all of this looks like LoRa, but every now and again, you can see the LoRa packets and they're very fast and very wide. So what will this connect to? Well, this is the node that I've made which will connect permanently to this Paradar antenna. It's a T-Beam Supreme, slightly taken apart to fit into this box. Now it has an 18650 battery as a backup and it's powered via USB. Luckily the battery gets charged while the USB is plugged into my USB hub, meaning if I turn off the computer in my office, then the node stays on. The T-Beam Supreme is running the latest version of Meshtastic and this will be the main reason for installing this antenna. Well, taking a quick look on the map for any dedicated nodes, we can see some as far away as Dunstable Downs and Bedford, and that's roughly around 25 kilometers away. Now, I don't live in a particularly high point, and I do have some hills around me, so having the best antenna I can get hold of, and as high as I can get it, gives me a fighting chance of receiving some half-decent LoRa signals. Now, I did also get another antenna from Paradar, and that's this. This is the 12.5 DBI 8 element Yagi for 868 megahertz. Now Yagis are directional antennas, so basically you point them in the direction you want to transmit and receive. Now I'll be showing this in more detail in an upcoming video. Now I'll leave some links below if you want to check out any of these products that I've shown in the video. Anyway, until the next video, take care, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.